Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Today it is day four of the 30 days of 30 minutes workouts. And after day three's rather intense row, today we're going back to a slight regenerative slower row. Okay, and this is one that will give you a chance to recover ish after yesterday, but also to kind of work on your fitness, work on your stroke and stuff. Okay, these are really important sessions, folks. Don't skip them. That's all I'm saying. So what we're going to do today is we're going to break up the 30 minutes into five minute chunks. There's going to be six of them, strangely. Um, and we're going to do the first one at 18 strokes a minute and the next one at 20 strokes a minute. And then we're just going to alternate all the way through. OK, so it's it's just shifting the stroke rates to make it a little bit more interesting. So you're not just facing half hour of the same stroke and your pace. Well, for the 18 strokes a minute, you're going to be round about 2K plus 20 to 22. And for the 20 strokes a minute, you're going to be round about 2K plus 18 to 20. OK, as ever on this session, if you feel it's getting a little bit too intense, back off the pace. OK, slow down by a couple of seconds. I want you to keep this at that bottom intensity. OK, if it starts to get too intense, just slow down. All right. Now, as ever, if you're doing this on Erg Zone, remember I have the four minute warm up and the two minute cool down set as standalone rows. And if you bookmark them, you can quickly load them up into your monitor and then you can do the 30 minute session as a standalone 30 minutes which then means that if you want to, you can rank it at the end, okay? So rather than giving you the four minute, the 30 and the two, um, you're gonna have to load up three sessions if you're doing this with ErgZone, all right? Makes life a lot simpler for everybody. So as such, we're gonna get into our four minute warm up, And we always start off by setting up our machine because we don't know who's been using it before us. In my case, my daughter was. So. Go to your drag factor first, make sure that's where you want it to be. Um, if you don't know about drag factor, please check out the video I have on this YouTube channel. I roll around about 120 to 125. I don't sweat it too much, hovering a little bit around there. Next up, go to your monitor and set it at eye height if you can, so you're not having to look up and you don't have to look down, all right? I don't really like the row machines that have the monitor there because you're forced to do that. And finally, if you can adjust the height of your foot stretchers, the foot plates, set them kind of so that the strap goes across the balls of your feet. OK, and what that'll do is it'll allow you to get to the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position. If they're set too high, you might not quite be able to get there. You'll be all bound up. If you're set too low, then you'll have hyper flexibility and go flying straight past it, which can cause injury and power leaks and all that kind of stuff. So start with the, the straps across the balls of your feet and then adjust from there would be my suggestion. All right. So as to the four minute warm up, we're going to do this at 18 strokes per minute to start. And we're really just going to look at the amount of force you can get from your feet that you can think about connecting your feet to your hands and then we'll start to increase up to around about 2k plus 20 pace all right so just for the start almost like a body weight squat not too much power because you're thinking about connection for the short we start bit all right you ready for this here we go then in three two one let's go it's like i say 18 strokes per minute a nice gentle start stroke rate wise for this warm-up and what I want you to do is think about when you push your feet into the foot plate that you can feel your hands connecting the handle to the flywheel or the water wheel or the hamster wheel or the ferris wheel, whatever you're rowing on, that as you push, your hands connect at the same time. Because if you push your feet first before your hands connect, your backside scoots away underneath and you lose loads of power. If you grab the flywheel before your legs connect, urgh, you can't quite put that leg power in. So you lose pace. So ideally push and connect at the same time. Now, as we get into the second minute of the warm-up. Start to increase your pace towards that 2K plus 20. And if you don't know what I mean by 2K plus something, you row a two kilometer time trial, divide the resulting time by four, and that gives you your average pace to cover 500 meters in your 2K time trial. And that is your 2K base training pace. So when I say 2K plus 20, you go 20 seconds slower than your 2K pace. There's a better description of this on the 
video description so have a read of that if you want to know more one more stroke then we're going to put one foot on the ground continue rowing and still make sure to put a good old push from the leg that's still strapped in you're not softening off just because you've only got one leg in you'll probably ease pace by about five seconds because after all you've only got one leg strapped in one more here and let's swap feet it's always interesting to see if there's a pace difference between legs if you're kind of putting in the same amount of perceived effort from each I seem to be bang on for both today which is nice try not to hyper extend your back at the front it's easy to because you can <laughs> okay both feet in legs straight and then swing over your back pull in your arms so you're just using your back and arms to put power into the machine and really think about swinging over your back as you pick up the flywheel and then pull in your arms okay and then you release your arms swing back over your back again right let's roll to the front straight arms forward lean and just press out from the front not too hard because I want you to try and hold this forward lean and straight arms and just get used to driving out in this position arms straight forward lean and just assess and think am I still leaning forwards are my arms straight as I press out from the front one more Ooh. bang on zero okie doke so as always or as always on these 30 uh, 30 days of 30 minutes I'm not doing the thing where I normally cut have a drink and set everything up so I'm gonna have a drink now I'll cover the microphone and then I'll explain just one more time what it is that we're doing today hang on oh. just in case you have that up really loud you don't want to hear me drinking <laughs> really loud in your ears um so anyway uh, just to repeat, what we're doing today is a 30 minute row, strangely, um, broken into five minute intervals. And then we're going to do the first one at 18 strokes per minute and at 2k plus 20 to 22 pace. Then we're going to do 20 strokes a minute at 2k plus 18 to 20 pace. And then we're just going to keep on going between those. So 18, 20, 18, 20, 18, 20. Six intervals, and then we're done. Well, tiny little cool down, and then we're done. So this is a bottom intensity row, okay? This is one that will let you work on your technique to work on your fitness, to kind of build that core fitness, to have a regenerate or recovery, if you want to call it that, after yesterday's really tough row, okay? This is a, such an important row. These ones uh, are the ones that will build up your energy to be able to go fast. Without these, you burn out really quick, okay? That's kind of the importance of these. And they give you the rhythm, the timing by rowing slow. This is how you work on your fluidity of your technique. Um, chances are if you don't really get if you feel a bit sticky and you're not quite used to the 20 and 18 strokes a minute it's because you don't have that fluidity and once it all comes in and you've got that rhythm you suddenly go oh i love the 18s i love the 20s <sighs> okay <laughs> that's my big sell so uh that's it really i'm gonna do this one strapless again feel free to join me but if you've never rode strapless before then just loosen the straps off just in case you go flying off the back you can quickly flick your toes against the straps because i don't want you lying on the floor Okay, we've had two minutes since finishing the warm-up, so we might as well get into this one. In three, two, one, and go! Oh, right, so 18 strokes a minute, 2k plus 20 to 22 pace. I'm such a pro, I was able to switch my Apple Watch to rowing machine workout whilst telling you your pace. <laughs> without falling off the machine. <laughs> uh, set myself up for failure that way. I'm going to fall right off in a minute. So yeah, so five minutes at 18 strokes per minute and 2K plus 20 to 22 pace. Now hopefully 
the graphics on screen are going to work today the past couple of rows I've had a big TV next to the rowing machine with the data on it but today I'm going to try doing a screen record and then overlaying it when I upload it to YouTube I'm trying to it sounds lazy but I'm trying to make these as quick as I can to turn around because I'm making one every day I will really run the risk of falling behind if things get too complicated but hopefully a screen capture won't break the time bank so if you see metrics on screen it worked if you don't it didn't <sighs> it's like Schrodinger's cat isn't it so we're two minutes in I've flanneled enough that hopefully you are now in the rhythm nice and warm and we can start talking a little bit about technique because today I'll top load the row with technique chat and then I'll talk about something else once I'm done going over technique because it's a really good reason I always talk about it it's not just to fill in time I mean it's handy <laughs> The fact that I can talk at great length about technique fills up a lot of the time I need to try and cover while I'm talking to you but also it really is vital that you pay attention to your technique especially when it comes to things that are losing you power, pace or things that are causing you injuries and that is why I go on about technique so much is that I want you to be an efficient rower because with efficiency comes speed and fitness but I also want to make sure you don't get injured and a poor technique can lead to various injuries and most of it is down to sequencing and body angles if you can get your body in the right positions as you drive and as you finish then hopefully you're less likely to get injured and then you just have to worry about putting in power from your legs and developing your fitness to be able to go for longer in whatever distance you're rowing or faster all right two more strokes one more and let's change up to 20 strokes a minute slight increase in pace here both on screen pace and your drive speed okay so that's the amount of time it takes for you to get from the front of the machine to the back of the machine that's your drive speed and at 20 strokes per minute I recommend a 2 to 1 
ratio. So your drive speed is twice as fast as your recovery. So one second drive, two seconds recover. And you manage that by really pushing your feet into the machine. Okay, so you push the machine away from you. It's a great way to think about it. That lets you thrust your legs and get lots of power into the machine. However, it's all very good driving from front to back in one second. But if you don't actually connect the power into the machine, it's not much use. So, in order to get that power in, you need to get your hands to connect to the handle at the same time that you push with your legs. Now most of that is just about being aware of the timing, but you also help yourself with your body position, your posture, and what you're doing with your arms. So your body position is about having a forward tilt in towards the front of the machine to around about one o'clock on the clock face. Now the reason I say tilt and not lean is I want you to be tilting forwards over your hips. Whereas if I say lean, that means you could do this. Okay? Which we don't want. And that's where posture comes in. So you want to be nice and powerful up on your sit bones. That's that tilt, like a door hinge. So you tilt forwards. I used to say, imagine you have a carrot sticking up your backside. And you don't want to snap it. But strangely, I think a few people were a bit put off by that analogy. I haven't really found a good replacement analogy yet. But nice and powerful. You're not stiff as a board on your back. You're powerful, okay? And tilting in towards the front. And then your arms, they're nice and straight, okay? So as you come front to the front, straight, straight line from your shoulders through to your wrists. And nice and relaxed, you're not tense, okay? No bulging muscles. One more stroke. And let's ease off to 18 strokes a minute. And 2K plus 20 to 22 pace. So you should feel that things have slowed down. It's only two strokes a minute, but still there's a change in rhythm. Remember if you get stuck trying to get the same rhythm or the rhythm for 18, just watch me 
on the video try and drive for the same period of time that I recover sorry, I drive <laughs> and then recover for the same period of time that I recover so back to the stroke you have your forward tilt good posture arms straight you slide far enough in your seat for your shins to point vertically your knees are slightly apart kind of looking at your armpits they're not tucked up inside your armpits but they're kind of saying hello they're in line with them and that should take care of the right amount of compression and then when you're ready just push the machine away with your feet but hold that forward lean and your arms nice and straight as you push your feet into the machine if you spot your elbows bending too soon try not to it may help to turn your elbows very slightly outwards that can help lock your arms in place without actually locking your elbows we don't want to do that and then if you feel that you're looking at the ceiling as you row that's a good indicator of breaking your back tilting too soon so keep looking straight forward at your monitor if you can and then once your leg drive is run about halfway through that is when you finally swing over your hips from that forward lean into the backward lean okay so from one o'clock at the front you swing over your hips to 11 o'clock at the back and right after you start that swing is when you finally pull the handle into a finish pull so you push pull push swing pull the three elements push swing pull push swing pull but you're keeping your arms straight until I say pull okay so push swing pull push swing pull see how long we're delaying before we finally pull those arms in but it's important that you still do pull as that will help you with your recovery all right in three two one let's go up to 20 strokes a minute just remember one stroke every three seconds slightly faster drive speed and then when you pull in you finish with the handle around about sternum height too low is a bit of a weak finish if you're gonna whack it off your belly button too high shifts 
the muscles you're using. You're suddenly using forearms and biceps, which are nowhere near as big as your lats, which you use if you finish the handle at sternum height, elbows come through your sides, wrists kind of flat as you do so. If you have to flare out your elbows a little bit, that's fine. A little bit of a flare is okay, but unless you have a good reason, like you're an on the water rower or something, I don't really recommend going completely out like a chicken wing. Hopefully you can see that in the video. Because again, that puts the power right into your delts up in your shoulders rather than those big lat muscles in your back which are more designed for dealing with power over and over again. You may have strong biceps, strong forearms, strong delts, but you're running the risk of injury if you use them too much and they're not ready for it. So that's why I say to start off your technique by handle finishing at sternum height, wrists flat with just a slight flare out of your elbows. And anyway, you finish nice and powerfully with a handle so that you create the springiness in your muscles, your tendons, and your rib cage to bounce your hand straight back out again. So in out at the same pace. There's no pause. Do not hold the handle stopped at the back. I'll try and do it without falling off here. Ooh. Ooh. Because I find it really difficult to come forwards again with my feet out of the straps because I'm no longer using my body's momentum to help me move forwards. Whereas by going in and out and your arms coming forwards and then triggering that rock of your back over your hips again, the momentum has carried me so that it's shifted to the front of the seat. So all I need to do is once my hands are past my knees, just bend my knees and I effortlessly roll to the front of the machine with arms straight and the forward lean already in place. Okay, two strokes, one more. And we're back down to 18. And 2K plus 20 to 22 pace. What's Ergzone is saying I'm currently at 71% of my max heart rate which is probably still just a touch high for this kind of session. But 
our sacrifice about 5% heart rate because I talk to you. So if I was rowing this normally without my gums flapping the whole way through, I would probably be around about 66, 67% of my maximum. So intensity wise, this is probably about right for me. So the last thing to say technique wise is just to quickly cap off what I was saying about the foot straps and why rowing without them is useful and in terms of what we talked about today it's useful because I can get all the power into the machine I know is coming from my legs and going into the stroke whereas if I had a poorly timed stroke and I flicked my feet up against the straps too soon at the back of the stroke I could be fighting against that power or if I was to get to the back of the stroke and flick my feet up to tug myself forwards to the front of the machine that would ruin my posture because you tend to tuck under like that and I wouldn't be up on my sit bones and I'd also be using muscles that I don't need to because you don't need to tug yourself forwards and I'm proof of that because I'm rowing this whole session strapless so that's why strapless rowing can be of benefit because you kind of need to row with a full leg drive get the timing right because otherwise you'll fall off the back of the machine and you have to get that shift of your body weight arms away tilt over your hips you have to get that right too because otherwise you're beached at the back of the stroke if you're used to just tugging yourself forwards with the straps Ooh. okay so coming up for six minutes to go and for me anyway today's session has flown by can't believe we're almost 25 minutes down and that's part of the magic of shifting stroke rates every five minutes because to be honest there isn't much of a training effect difference between the two between 18 and 22 there's a tiny difference but not a huge one where the difference comes in is making time pass quickly and also if you're uncomfortable with one you get back into your comfort zone for the next one okay one more stroke and now we're going up to 20 strokes a minute 2k plus 18 to 20 for the last time well last time today trust me you're gonna see <laughs> this stroke rate and pace a few more times over the next what are we on 26 days to go remember as much as I'm rowing all 30 days without a break you don't have to if you start to tire 
and your body is getting run down and you're not recovering enough make sure to take a rest day you'll see from the programming of these 30 rows that there's always one of these bottom tier regener regenerative there we go <laughs> lost the ability to say the word then it's always a tough row and then a bottom tier so it goes mid bottom top bottom mid bottom top bottom then maybe a couple of mids so it'll go mid bottom mid bottom top bottom that might happen but oh, I've dropped my pace too busy talking to you that's better uh, but the point is that if you get the intensities intensity flow right and you make sure to row these bottom tiers at the right pace so that means what I say or slower and as long as you make sure to stretch eat right and get your hydration right you should be able to make it through all 30 workouts with very few actual rest days and the end result will hopefully be that you are fitter faster and stronger but I'll tell you one thing once the 30 days are up I am going to take two or three days off to let my body properly recover because these bottom tier regenerative recovery rows don't fully allow you to recover from the intensity of the sessions before which is why I say if you start to feel it's getting on top of you just take a rest day there's no heroics in doing 30 days in a row of undulating intensity you can easily do like half hour at this pace you can do these till the cows come home and probably won't need a rest day but because we're throwing in or I'm throwing in who's this we because I'm throwing in mid intensity and max intensity workouts just watch that your tank of available power doesn't get scraped dry okay five strokes to go four three two one there we go and that's day four's main workout done now I did get something of a cardiac drift towards the end of there where my heart rate rose to 75 which is certainly higher than I'd want if I was doing this without talking to you but I am going to play the I don't shut up card <laughs> I'm not rode in the gym for a long long time I do wonder what will happen the first time I go to a gym and I have to row in silence or just music on am I going to be like talking away to myself just telling myself my own 
<laughs> my, my own technique. Oh, keep your back straight. Ooh, zombies. Ooh, carrots. Anyway, right. In about 12 seconds time, we'll get into our two minute cooldown. So get yourself sorted for that. Okay, in five seconds to go. Three, two, one. Let's go. So 18 strokes per minute. Just nice light rowing. If you want to look at a pace, then maybe around about 2k plus 20. We were rowing nice and slow today, so you can start off at that 2k plus 20. Oh, or oh, I seem to be 2k plus like 40 right now. <laughs> I'm just, there we go. It's too busy. Again, too busy talking to you. I will increase my pace up to 2k plus 20. There we go. Sorry about that. This is the downside to recording these as live all the time. As I have absolutely, not that I ever do chop stuff out anyway, but I have absolutely no nowhere to hide. <laughs> okay, For the second minute of the cooldown you can start. Just easing off the pace. I'm gonna aim for around about 2k plus 30, which is 2.15 for me. And even though today was a softer session, these cooldowns are still really important. If you are able to, then always fit in a cooldown just so you can consolidate everything you've just done, clear your brain, clear your muscles, make sure you're ready to go home. Okay, three strokes for me, but of course you can continue cooling down. Ugh. You don't have to stop just because I have. If you have, then take this time to stretch or pack up well, I'd do a quick goodbye. Try not to prolong these. Um, just because, I mean, if you look at some of my other videos, boy, can I go on at length <laughs> when it comes to the, to the outros, but I'll try not to. Um, so yes, yeah, so that was day four of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts. I do hope you're enjoying them so far. I do hope that um, you find that the pacing is working out for you and this recovery side of things is working out for you as well. Let me know if, uh, if you have any thoughts on that. And let's hope that these graphics have managed to go up on screen. <sighs> let's see whether that worked or not. Um, remember, on the plan is on Sundays, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, UK time, which is important. I don't think I've said that yet. Uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, UK time, uh, I have joined forces with Fitness Matters. And uh, well, basically, they are running every uh, Sunday morning at 9 o'clock UK time. They run an ERG race half hour session. So uh, Sam and I have kind of said, hey, why not just cross promote it? So I've, um, I'm telling you guys um, that if you want to join in on nine o'clock in the morning, UK time on Sundays on Erg Race, then uh, there's a race that everybody can join in on. And you don't have to be part of Fitness Matters. You don't have to have anything to do with Roll Along. You can just jump on, okay? I will post the Competition code um, on, well, it'll be on the Facebook group anyway, the Roll Along Facebook group, but I'll also post it on the YouTube community channel so that you can find it there, okay? So that's the easiest way to get to it. Sam's also running a Zoom chat thing. Um, now, I'm not going to post that on the YouTube side of things because I don't want it to be uh, too widely spread in case just a whole bunch of numpties come in, <laughs> but it will be on the Facebook, the Roll Along Facebook group, okay? So that's the, the little kind of forward plan for Sundays. However, we've still got day five and six to get through, so I do hope you will come back for them. Make sure to have something to drink and something to eat after today's session. I want to make sure that we've all got enough energy inside us to be able to get through as many of these sessions as we want to. Remember, you don't have to do all 30, but hey, if you can, then go for it. Um, yeah, so that brings us to the end. And I'm, I'm just kind of thinking, ah, what was I what was I thinking about for, because yeah, I tend to put in a hashtag now that you can use and say, hey, I made it to the end of your video. And I thought at one point I had it, but it's just suddenly gone out of my head again. Um, uh, let's just do recover. Uh, recover well, recover sensibly, recover, something about recovery, basically, because that's the importance of crazy. Even at day four, you can start to feel that, hang on, ooh, when we're going to get a break from this. So 
uh, if you're going to put a hashtag, just do something about recovery. Recover well, recover sensibly, recover smart, or, or smart recovery, something like that. Um, and that way I can go, oh, look, you did make it all the way to the end. So uh, hopefully you've stretched off. Hopefully you've finished your cool down. Hopefully you've uh, been okay putting up with my waffle. Because trust me, there's another 26 days worth of this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and yeah, there is. I'm not even joking, there is. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for being for uh, joining in with me on this. Um, hopefully we will all, like I say, get fitter, faster, stronger as a result of it. So cool, cool, cool. It's a winner either way. So I will see you in day five. Please make sure and leave me some kind of a comment somewhere, either on Instagram or Twitter or YouTube or, or whatever. Um, just to say hi. It's not about spreading the socials. It's not like I make any money out of this stuff. Um, I just want to hear from you. I just want to know that you're, that you're actually there on the other side of the camera. Okay? Because otherwise I'm sitting here talking to myself and that's quite sad. <laughs> so anyway, look after yourselves. Stay safe. Be well. Bye-bye.